what exactly is causing the hair loss? Well, it's multifactorial, involves blood flow to the hair follicles, the survival of the hair follicle. A lot of that stuff you don't give a shit about. You want to know the most effective way. We know that DHT conversion occurs through the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. 5 alpha reductase enzyme. It's a very large mouthful. But there's three subtypes. Type 1, type 2, and now there's type 3. The finasteride is an inhibitor of subtype 2. It causes 70% suppression at its maximal concentration. So if you take one milligram or I guess 100 milligrams a day, it doesn't make a difference. Now, dutasteride blocks 2 and 1 and is much stronger that a 0.5 milligrams a day is pretty much overkill. That to get something like equivalent doses, you'd have to do like 0.1 milligram a day. So basically a 0.5 milligram to test right every five days. Or to get a 50% suppression, rather than equivalent to the 70% of the um, finasteride, dutesteride to get the equivalent dose is 0.1, so one-fifth the minimum dose. To get even better, 50%, because we don't want to crush DHT completely usually, you want to do a 0.5 every 10 days. See, it has like a five-day, ha five-week half-life. So if you fuck up and overdose on this drug, it'll be months before it's out of your system. So for this reason, people are resorting to topical. Now, there is a theory that the topical finasteride gets into your bloodstream just as much as if you swallowed it. So it doesn't make a difference. Supposedly it's because the molecule size is the same, is uh, small. But the dutesteride supposedly has a large molecule size and so it doesn't get in your bloodstream. But there's not been, it hasn't been available for commercial use long enough for us to see if there's been any results. I did find a study that showed that there is only a 5% reduction in systemic DHT and a, a, a co-committant small increase in testosterone, showing that it does get in your bloodstream, but it is very minimal. And there was a huge increase in hair. It was in like, I think a one month period, there was a 20% increase in all three parameters of the hair. So there are other agents you can use, of course, because this is just to stop the conversion of testosterone into DHT. But any androgen can bind to the androgen receptor. Not, it's not like they're GHT specific, it's, it's all one androgen receptor. So RU58841 is an experimental drug that will, it's topical and it blocks the androgen receptor. So that means like, for example, a 100 DHT to a zero DHT would you'd think that you couldn't possibly lose any hair because you have a DHT of zero. But if you're taking, let's say, a thousand milligrams of Masteron or a thousand milligrams of Primo or a thousand milligrams of Deca, it's still a thousand milligrams of an androgen. It's almost equivalent. That a thousand milligrams would be theoretically equivalent to 200 milligrams of DHT. So what the smart move would be is to block the hair follicles with the dutesteride and the 58841, the RU5. We'll call it RU5, like it's a Star Wars droid. Hopefully Disney doesn't sue me for this video. There's other things you can do, like a ketoconazole shampoo. Minoxidil will help with increased blood flow to the hair to help it grow better. And studies have shown that redundancy is not a problem. It's synergistic and it huge benefits. That using four mechanisms together, using oral, 5-alpha reductase inhibition, topical dutesteride, topical minoxidil, and topical ketoconazole when you shampoo, you will get inc much, much better results than even using three of the things alone. Another thing you might want to do is a derm roller. That's basically a, kind of looks like a garden tiller. It's basically a bunch of needles on a roller with a handle. Very easy to find. Um, they got them on Amazon. You want like a one millimeter to 1.5 millimeter micro needler. Do it once a week, not on days you use minoxidil. 
and that is supposed to irrigate the scalp so that the topicals get in. And that is all of these methods work, even the red light therapy works. But when you use multiples together, you get much better results than using two or three of them alone. So, for example, what I'm doing, microneedling once a week, that's the complicated one, ketoconazole shampoo, topical minoxidil at a 7.5 concentration, topical RU58841, and also I'm using topical dutesteride. I believe it's a 1% solution. You know, these are commercially available. You have to get a prescription, so it's not like you're just going to fuck this up. The doctors are going to prescribe it to you. Um, I'm currently using strut. Now, I don't know if that's the best one. People might say strut sucks, strut sucks, fucks ass, sucks ass, blah, blah, blah. But I'm getting my RU58841 from a different company. And I'm also, of course, getting my ketoconazole shampoo. The brand I use is Nizerol. And I'm also going to order some oral DHT, you know, oral dutesteride. And I'm going to take 0.5 milligrams every 10 days so that I will get 50% suppression of my DHT. Because what I found is with an 840 testosterone, inject an intake of 200, 840 testosterone and an intake of 700 um, Primo, I had a 122 DHT. When I increased that Primo to 1,000 or 850 or 980 or something, then my DHT went up to 177, even though I didn't change the, um, the test. So um, a certain engineer who likes gorillas will tell you that the masterons and the DHT derivatives can't possibly cause you to lose hair when that's fucking our word because if you take it it's an aromatase inhibitor it's going to bind to the aromatase enzyme and stop converting of that test into estrogen which means there's more tests available to convert into dht and it drives the equation it, when when there's two different exit ramps off the freeway and they close one exit ramp all the rest of the cars have to get off the other exit ramp or keep going so that's just in, when you bottleneck it here, it increases flow over here. That's just how um, flow works. So that's the way enzyme kinematics will work too. The problem is when somebody comes from an engineering background and they come into biochemistry without understanding biochemistry, it seems cut and dry without understanding the actual dynamics of the human body. The human body is not a robot. It's not a computer. It's not a bicycle. It's going to evolve and fight against everything you try to do to change it. So you have to change it for multiple ways. So in this case, if you raise the DHT derivatives, it will inhibit the conversion to estrogen, which means it's going to drive up conversion to DHT. So my DHT went from a 120 to 177 by increasing my DHT derivatives, even though the test was the same. So therefore, in order to preserve hair, I find that a safe dose, let's say a safe DHT level for you is 60, you don't lose hair at 60, but you lose hair at 100, then that means if you've got a 100, then you could take 0.5 dutesteride every 10 days, and in theory, you have to use blood work to determine that, and get a hold of me if you can't, if you don't know how to read blood work, you cut that in half with the dutesteride, and it should work. Now, a lot of people are like, I don't want to take the test right because I don't want my dick to stop working. That's why we're doing 0.5 every 10 days. It's, it's, things aren't black and white. It's not a light switch. It's not like it turns on and off. Like, there's either a side effect or there's no side effect. There is a spectrum of dose, and then there's a spectrum of side effect. And as you increase in the dose, this it might be efficacious, is like this, and whoosh, side effects are like that. Whoosh. So the point is, is to catch it at the point along this axis so you get the maximum efficacy but the minimum amount of side effects. That's called receptor mapping, and that's what we do with blood work. Get a hold of me. Um, the consult link will be below, and we can triage it from there. You have a great day.